Carol Francis. I'm trying to call you from another location. I see that you're hello? you're. Uh, yes, hello. Hello, this is Forelli. Uh, Akiana was waiting for like 20 minutes on the line, and we're trying to see why no, uh, we you cannot be reached. And 20 minutes yes. we've been trying to. And there was a radio like music all the time playing, and that's why you know I you know she's right now summoning him from another condominium. So I'm waiting for Kenneth to come. She'll be back here in a, in a few minutes. Okay, very good. Now, we weren't going to do the radio show today. We were just going to try to see if the equipment worked okay. And I had a little oh, glitch on my side of it, which is my problem. So we got over my okay. glitch. Okay. Okay. So is this, is this her mother? Uh, this is this is for Welly. You uh, wrote to me on Facebook. Oh, I'm so pleased to meet you. You have such an interesting story. I want to interview you as well. Hello. Well, hello, Fr- Francis, right? Yes, yes, Dr. You, Carol Francis. You can call me Carol. Dr. That's Carol. fine. Okay. Hi, Carol. So yes, uh, we uh, we we well, you, we chatted a little bit uh, during our correspondence. And I'm glad yes. today is not the radio show because she got all a uh, little bit worried because there was nowhere to get through. Yes, I know, and I'm so sorry. I had the glitch on my side of things, and uh, and I just finally got it fixed up, and there was no way to reach you. I tried to find a number, and I didn't have it with me. So, um, so is this is this a number going to work for you to call in when we do the radio show? Does this look like this is going to function well enough? Our right now we're in Hawaii. And yeah. are we doing it to? Are we doing the radio show today or tomorrow? What time? Yes. No. Um, I told Mark that uh, the radio show we can set it at any time, but I normally have a radio show on Monday at ten o'clock in the morning. That's Pacific Coast time. I don't know if that works for you or not. Okay. At ten. Uh, it's only Mondays, right? Well, no, I can I can record them at different times. Um, that's my standard one. But I can record them any time, and then I can replay them over and over again. Okay. Well, we can uh, – she's okay right now when she comes back, as long as she was already ready to kind of chat with you. Is is, is today a good time, or do we have to postpone un- until another time? I wasn't planning on today, but I can go ahead and do today if you want to. I'm Okay. <laughs> Uh, so I wanted to find out is this uh, is this to, uh, is this right? Would you like to talk with her and to record today, like right now yes. or later? We absolutely can record today if you would like to. Okay, so uh, uh, Akiana is here, and today she's she she had a glitch. Akiana, Akiana, she's right now with me. So she'll explain to you to you about the glitch and everything, and you can just keep on chatting with her. So you can. You can you can you can kind of work with Akiana a little bit, and if you need uh, anything from my part, I'm around. Uh, I'm okay, here. wonderful. And wonderful. if you have any Thank questions you. after you you finished with Akiana, let me know, and I'm passing uh, the phone right now on to her. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, so yeah. I'll talk to you a little later, and here's Akiana. Hello. Hi, Akiana. This is Dr. Carol Francis, and you can call me Carol, and I'm so sorry about that glitch that kept you waiting for so long. Oh, absolutely not. I thought it was just probably my problem. Maybe I did something wrong. But it's oh, no. <laughs> no, actually, Mark had said today we would just do a trial run to see if the equipment worked, but it sounds like you're ready to do the interview. Do you want to go ahead on with that? Yeah, sure, no problem. I'm um, oh. Any time. <laughs> oh, you're so flexible. That's wonderful. Thanks. Okay. Well, why don't we go ahead? Right now it's recording, so we can actually record it, and then I will edit it when I uh, later on today, okay? Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. I have been following your artwork ever since I discovered you, and I, have, I can't put your artwork down. It just is so riveting and so filled with life and vigor mystery and a spiritual uh, 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 finger. It points to the spiritual aspects of my soul and of my artistry. And so I very much appreciate what you bring to the world of art, but I more bring appreciate what you bring to the world of humanity. And um, I don't know how you feel about your art currently. I just know what it stirs inside of me. So I'm really appreciative of having this opportunity to find out 
your perspective on your own artistic process, knowing that where you've come from when you were age four doing your work and where you are now may be very, very different or very similar. So I can't, where would you like to steer this discussion about who you are in terms of your artwork? Oh, first of all, I wanted to say thank you for s- such kind compliments, and, and they're extremely, extremely beautiful. So I wanted just to thank you for that. Um, oh. I, I through the years of my artwork and my family life, and it's been extremely, even extremely unique because I have not only grown as a person, I've been growing as a uh, in in my spiritual life as well, since the day that my eyes laid on the unknowns, my curiosity just grew from there. And I just felt I was like a growing plant, always reaching for the mysterious light and always trying to grow further and further into a big tree. And that's what I feel now, that my art seems to me like growing inside me as if it's a part of me and each time like I set a, f- a finger on my paintings I feel like every stroke and every color I feel their emotions I feel like they are a part of a, a human being almost it may have wow. expressions and and actions and I feel that every painting that I do represents a, a an emotion, a actual event that happened at uh, some point in time in the universe. And I'm so ecstatic that I was able to actually portray that in physical form. And today I'm actually astonished how far I, I've come and, and accomplished. And wow. I'm, nev- I'm never stopping. I, I feel so great um, using this ability to encourage children and, and adults to not live in fear all the time and stress. You live in love and, and, and be connected more. And I think that will always remain as my, my goal is to unite people. Wow, that is extraordinarily powerful, everything you just said. You know, Akiana, I did wonder when you started at such a young age if you would somehow burn out or you would somehow come to, you know, the teenage and post-teenage more cynical position of our society and world. And it doesn't sound like you've gone to that cynical place. (laughs) (laughs) I think this is a good question because I sometimes wonder the same thing. I feel like, wait, am I missing anything? (laughs) Did I leave out somewhere? (laughs) But yeah. I'm I'm looking at all the teenagers and even children or adults. I sometimes don't fit in any of those boxes. I feel sometimes I'm a little bit outside of the the normal <laughs> category. But actually, I I feel I feel normal. I feel great. I just I, there are just some things that um, it doesn't connect with me like other teenagers connect with some things. I just. I just kind of go where my mind and my heart wants to go and not what society wants me to go. And I I kind of base my life on that and that's that's kind of kind of where I am at right now and I love talking to children and teenagers and and even elderly people. I I feel them no matter what age group it is. I feel like I am part of them. And I could understand where they're going through. It's kind of a mixture of emotions running into my body while I talk to a, um, a human being, almost. Do you, do you ever do you ever try to make sense of what's happened to you? Because I'm, you know, I'm quite clear, and I get the impression you're quite clear that you are living a really unique uh, perspective experience as a human being. And as a human being on the planet in 2012, you're, you're, this is a very unique uh, person you are, um, some, someone that inspires all of us. I'm not trying to hold you up on a pedestal because that's just really not fair to you or anyone else. But nonetheless, it's unique. So what, have you ever tried to figure out why? Why me? Why me? 
Oh, oh, absolutely. I've wow. always, I always felt that there was some answers that, some questions that weren't answered. But at the same time, I look at the bigger picture. If I found out that the answer to that question, I would, it would just narrow down my, my ability to learn. I think that in a way, I like the mystery of not knowing why because mm. it just makes it more uh, adventuresome and unique. And I think that some other children and some other people are the exact same way in, in some occasions that they just don't know why they are chosen or they have this amazing ability. And I think that that's the beauty of being a human is not – knowing some little details. And I'm mm. actually quite glad that I don't know that answer. It makes me stronger. So in one of the mysteries of, of one of your uh, pieces of artwork that just really, I can't stop looking at it when I see it. There's numbers of, a number of them like that. It's the white, I don't know the name of it. I don't have it in front of me, unfortunately, but it's the white, <laughs> beautiful, I don't know what to call it. It was these amazing colors of flowers and a fla- uh, floral slana. It's it I, it just and I and that has mystery for me. Like what's happening inside? Who's inside? Who dwells here? What is this the the, the place of uh, what what sense of peace? Why are these colors so amazing? So what what is that painting for you? What is that for you, Akiana? I actually, uh, are you talking about the children in the dressed in white? Is that the painting that you're talking about? No, it's actually it's the one where there's actually a building that's all white and uh, oh, and, the, and, the yeah. supreme sanctuary. That's that's yes. yes. What is that? Actually, <laughs> that is actually many people ask me this question, and it is one of, one of the most difficult and challenging pieces I've ever done. Even though it's so it it's it looks simple in in the composition and the colors but to me it was to portray that was extremely hard because that was one of the glimpses of paradise that i i i've experienced and the the colors the water the plants it it came to life um it just they had voices, they had faces, they had feelings, and they had planets in in the bulbs of the of the flowers. I felt that to to grasp all that information, the infinite information, and put it on the specific colors on a palette was was challenging. But if if you can really see, I I, I hope that people can can see what I saw as I was standing in the midst of, of that garden. So if we try to grasp, you know, obviously you as the creator of that painting, the transmitter of the the communication between what you saw and us as the audience of, of looking into that painting, you as the in-between, the mediator, would would you convey that every single object that you paint wants to scream out a message or wants to share their story or wants to radiate their life or, or, or how would you put this every painting that i do is a portrayal of a world that i have seen or visited and it has a specific emotions and specific stories and experiences that are trying to project through the canvas. In a way, it's. I feel like each time when I visit my gallery, I feel like the paintings actually move. They're like a moving picture that I go inside, and it's like a whole other atmosphere when, when I enter. It's. I feel like that every painting has a, a, an emotion that they want to draw people's attention to. They want to to comfort them. And it I it did those paintings that actually reacted to me as well. I felt like I was part of of 
of uh, of them and of those worlds as well. Had you like visited them the way someone might like in an out of body or near death experience or in visions or meditations or dreams or all of the above or none of the above? It's it's extremely hard to, to put it in words <laughs> what the actual <laughs> actual image was, but I do recall it's. It's, it is some of them are like visions and and dreams, and other times there are a clash against realities that um you know as as you walk down like a garden or by the beach, and sometimes I feel like some realities collide, and it's neither a dream or a vision it's just it's happening right in front of my eyes, and it's what is and not what is going to be. And I felt that it's kind of hard to put a word to that. But that's what most most of the, most of the paintings um ideas and and inspiration come from is the collision of the realities and visions and dreams and it could be paintings of people that I meet, things I see, just everything is an inspiration to me. Quite clearly, so this whole idea of collision um, is—I I mean, I want to get my head around this as much as I can. It's—it's it's you both looking at it and also feeling it inside you. It's you both taking in the ordinary perception of reality and yet somehow experiencing multi-dimensional uh, activity going on simultaneously that kind of converge. Yeah, it, it's it, the best way to describe it. It's like a parallel universes in a way where there are one things that happen and you see on your other eye that another things that happen at the same time and I feel like I could mm, I could balance that out in in front of my vision. I and sometimes it just p- pulls together like a magnet and it it could be one side of it from a different world and another side is it on earth. It's kind of almost, I'm kind of like in a between, like a, like a glue. I don't know how else I can explain it. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. And I, I thank you for struggling with me. <laughs> to take something that's not ordinary to the, just the ordinary observer, it, it, what's it like for you to talk, you know, to do the interviews? And again, I thank you so much for doing this, but to talk to people and try to, Say something that's not going to be you know, incredibly uncomfortable for them to hear, but know that you're actually taking them outside their ordinary perspective and trying to either elevate them or expand them or shift them in order for them to understand what you are understanding. What's that like for you to try to help people to move beyond their limits? I believe that through my curiosity and through my exploration, and my the divide, diverse emotions, I feel that through that wondersome of a child, I experience the 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 unknown, and sometimes I feel that people, through many distractions and hesitations, they feel um, some little sometimes threatened or stressed out or very withdrawn to the idea of letting go and just be curious. I think mm-hmm. people, humanity has lost that, has lost the, the wondering and not, mm-hmm. in a way, not uh, withdrawing as much. I think people need to stand up more and be more open to more possibilities to to to, to the unknowns and I believe that many many good things will happen if if things um would will open up like that. So okay, so then if we just grasp this moment right now, it's like if people walk outside their dogmatism, whether it's whatever personal decree or organized religious decree, if they if they can just suspend that for whatever period of time, and then move and shift into their kind of an elevated sense of awe and wonderment and curiosity, then they're more open to the expansiveness of what's actually available for them to sense than they are yes, when they're I, re- I can, go, Yes, go. 
Yes, I, I, I was going to say I absolutely, absolutely, that's absolutely agree. That's exactly what um, I was, I meant because what people do, they have. I've noticed that they always have a, a closed uh, perspective on on life, and so many times they don't really uh, live as it was supposed to and was meant to be. I believe that. God wanted, or this universe has wanted us to be happy and, and experience and live. And people don't, in my opinion, don't really live in the open. They live in a box. And that's what's withdrawing a little bit of, of the humankind, in my opinion. So are you the uh, box opener? <laughs> <laughs> Should I'm all off. <laughs> trying to be. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Let's go into some boxes. You know, I've I've looked at so many interviews that you've done with different individuals and um, watched you in your long uh, portrayal of yourself doing your artwork. And uh, I think I stood there for the whole amount of time in awe watching you paint on one of your longer things. So I've I've done a lot of just kind of wondering about who you are and what you've processed. And one of the things is that it seems like you've come through different um, definitions of God and spirituality and your own your own spiritual perceptions on things. And have you come out of boxes yourself in this journey as you've expanded kind of a cognitive conscious? attitude or, or what what's that been like for you through the years i have been searching for a a place where i feel comfortable in and sometimes that led me through groups through churches through um specific uh, people but at the end i've found out that my personal my 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 god is more of a personal um and specific um extraordinaire in 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 my opinion i think that's more of a personal uh, uh sanctuary inside nothing can be duplicated or can 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 relate to it because it's it's a not like any other that's been created. Yes, the closest thing that I could, as a child, um, that I could relate, my God, is, is through some some different religion aspects of like Christianity and 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 so and so. But at the end, I I figured out nothing can have a word to what I really truly believe in. So I decided to just make it my own sanctuary inside inside my me and and keep it very close and dear and like like a gift um uh, being unopened so treasured <laughs> in a way. Oh that's so that's beautiful. But then how do you respond when you feel like someone wants you to embrace their point of view or their dogma or their um their scriptural definition or, or you know whatever uh, they want to impose on you as being the correct point of view. How, how do you how do you negotiate those moments? I I could relate actually to anybody and in, in any background in any in any position any religion and I feel that there's no wrong answer and there's no right answer. I think that if people have already feel comfortable in what they have chosen um it's 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 not how to explain it it's it's the mere fact of searching the truth on your own that is the, the true meaning of 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 being comfortable i feel like if people already have chosen their place then it's it's the search that counts that makes it exciting and that makes it uh beautiful and if they have already chosen then i've i feel like that I could relate as well because uh, I love everybody in in every race every position, and I think that we're all one we're all connected somehow 
and that's just the beauty of the ha- searching for the answer and searching for the truth. So it's like it, you it said that curiosity is so alive and animated for you as a process, as a guidance, so to speak, so that curiosity keeps us open um, and that when it's all defined, curiosity may be a little less, but you're okay with that person deciding to define things and and to live with kind of a sense of certainty, even though it's not your own um, yes. kind of style. Yes, it's actually. No, it's 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 quite complicated. Com- the world is all complicated. Yeah, <laughs> but that's probably the closest that I could that I they that what you said. <laughs> the, so in the process of, you know, you, you at the beginning of this uh, interview, you said something about that you want people to not live in the fear and stress that they create or that they uh, passage into. And you said that almost as if you had discovered a series of answers or experiences that would help people realize that attaching to stress and anxiety was really inessential and not that all that helpful. So what... What what's been your learning process? That, that or what, what insights or what spiritual moments or transportations or elevated communions have you had that make you say, no, don't live in that stress, don't grasp onto that anxiety. Through through my my my, my years of of my career, I have gone ups and downs in my spiritual growth and who hasn't at some point in their life Um, but what really came down was the fact of of the the beautiful just the beautiful reality of of what my little brother uh, said uh, his name is Ilya and what kept me grounded in my spiritual path is what he writes in his books I Sometimes I feel like that if I'm if I'm missing a piece of a puzzle, I always search uh, through his aphorisms, and it just makes me just feel more comfortable in in in, in that where I am where I'm going. And wow! It could be. I think every person needs to have that some sort of bit of guidance it could be a family member it could be a, some of a, a, a guru or it could be a friend or but someone who you can lean a shoulder on and just trust them and i feel mm-hmm. by doing that you will grow more and more and believe more and more uh in this in the spiritual unknown realms mm-hmm. and that's that's how i've became more comfortable in my spiritual paths and and more confident is by just reviewing some of the the little beautiful gifts that my little brother sometimes write in his books and I feel that brings me down to the the center of, of you know of connection I guess wow I've never I've had not read any of your brother's books are they published or available or no Oh yes, yes. They're pu- they're published, and he's working on his uh, uh, second and third book. But it, it's it's on his website as well, uh, ilyapoetry dot com. And from that point, I feel that he has just some sort of message that he wants to send to the world, and I feel so connected with him, and we're so very close, and I f- just I feel so alive when I'm around him. Wow, how much younger is he than you? He is uh, about seven seven years younger than me, so about eleven eleven years old. So, can you spell out his website so that um, people would be able to read his post, his poetry? It's um, ilyapoetry.com. It's i l i a p o e t r y dot com. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So now people can look that up, including me. Can you give an example of um, some of what he wrote and the the way it might have addressed a dilemma or a discomfort inside of you, something that you are willing to share so that people can learn, but I don't want you to feel awkward in disclosing things that are your private world. 
Oh gosh, there's <laughs> what Iyad what Iyad does is it's his he's absolutely so extraordinary because he's unlike any other child that you've ever ever would meet because he's so intellectual and so just out of his box to me I feel like he's a, like a 60 year old stuck in a 11 year old body because mm. he sees life so different and he sees life with uh, with meanings and, and stories and and when I try to find a meaning to a story, I always just ponder on his aphorisms. Sometimes I don't remember one at the particular point, but he is just so many people praise him and for, for his, his little, just his humorism, his uh, his light to the, what he brings. And I totally think that he's a blessing to me that I, I'm so happy that he's my brother. That is beautiful. <laughs> I'm having this vision of uh, your brother, very young, sitting in front of one of your amazing paintings and just as if he's being teleported or transmitted right into the painting and experiencing it and then being able to bring the words the words back oh. to the poetry. Has that ever happened? Oh, yes. Actually, there are quite a few times that that happened because uh, – Sometimes where he actually loves to uh, paint abstract as well. He loves to just write uh, paints in the words on the canvases. He likes to just maneuver these universes together. It's just absolutely extraordinary. But I had to, he was so inspiration to me that I, I took him and his this whole idea of his of his philosophy and actually painted in some of the paintings, and uh, so if if anyone is is will, will find him, he has that little presence in some of the paintings. It's a little mystery and a little puzzle. <laughs> oh really? Well, can you can you tell us? Can you can you guide our eyes as we look at your artwork? In what way? Where? How? Can you reveal the mystery? There are. There are some paintings uh, that has his features in it, and there's some paintings that has uh, some poetry in it that I, I that I put inside the paintings, such as um, the, it's called the, the creation, where it's uh, very very just mysterious space like atmosphere, and there are like light glowing from the center, and all around the universe there are his uh, sentences and sometimes his philosophies and his hidden words that he spoke of inside the the actual universe that um, I written um, like a secret message and just those little things that 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 I do all my paintings I I feel that he's definitely an inspiration to me. What you. Do you have any sense of why you have been, I don't know, chosen to portray the mysteries and the secrets and the profound revelations in the form of painting? And your brother, of course, is in poetry. But why why do painting? Is I know we could reduce it down to it being your skill and your talent. But, I mean, way beyond that, any ideas about why that is your vehicle of communicating? When I was younger, at three or four years old, I always experimented. I experimented with with food, with just clay, and uh, sometimes, you know, a little bit of the math and science. And I've experimented with as much as I can that my hands could get on. But when I just picked up the charcoals and those oil pastels, and when I the first time where I doodled on the walls and the tables and the floors, I wow. felt that the colors to me meant more than the numbers itself or the actual like dirt of the grounds or the waters. The colors represented the the unknown universes that could be created in a single brush stroke. And I think to me that was almost like a magic, and I feel that each time I put this little dust and little oil pastels on a 
and acrylics and oils. I feel like I was creating almost like a, a, a magic sanctuary where I could just go inside in the painting and run away and, and just run to the fields and into the story. I felt that was like a gateway to uh, another world. And that's kind of where that's my curiosity started expanding right when I hit the paper and and, and the colors. So it's almost, is it a little bit like you, you put the paint there, you put the, you put the acrylic, the, the dust, but you actually are like surrounded by the resonance, the energy, the the communication, the communion with whatever that single stroke provokes or evokes inside of you? Yes. I, 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 some people actually always wondered when they came come into my studio and they videotape for for a media show. I mm-hmm. always oh I always went pick up a stroke and I felt that there's always a meaning for every dot that I put on the paintings. There's always a reason why. Even though that I have to gesso it three, four times just to get the final result, I always think there's always a, a message and a meaning that's somewhere along the line, scientists or, or someone will find out what it is. Even I don't know. I I believe that it takes the brush strokes are just patterns and puzzles of of the the universes and I'm so glad I could hold it in my hand and and create it. Oh wow, that is amazing. That must be such an amazing experience for you. I actually I'm on the so you know vacation in Hawaii and we traveled all over the world and it's very hard for me to bring my my canvases and my paints and I haven't painted for four months and I felt I feel actually very very you know empty and tired inside and oh, oh. it's 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 so y- unique because I feel so ha- alive when I just step into my studios. I feel almost dead if I can't have those resources. I I feel like almost like a useless person. (laughs) But each time when I step in the studio, I feel so rejuvenated and so alive. And it's it's like pains are running through my 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 veins. it's, It's something that I can't really explain as much it's just you have to experience what what happens oh i'm so appreciating the way you're articulating this um, this transcendent experience we are i mean i'm people have to walk in their curiosity as to what this is like and the i don't know but i think that what one thing you're saying is that we're all capable on some level or another whether it's through art or some other medium of curiosity we're all capable of kind of having this elevated, transcendent uh, 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 mo- moment, experience, or way of engaging in life so that we are just like in the middle of the liveliness of whatever stroke we're creating. Uh, that's the hope that what you're saying, I hope that humanity knows that. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's so beautiful. That That's exactly what I, I feel and and sometimes I just feel that people are in the wrong places where they should be and more of in a, in their natural place. Sometimes people work in in some situations where they're, there's almost their whole energy is sucking them. And I feel that they have to, I, I wish that people could go back to their natural uh, abilities and just work on their natural abilities they will be more happier and they'll be more alive and the finance and the whole world will, will come uh, naturally in, in, into the lives. And I feel that when people start concentrating on what they really love, everything will naturally come into place, like a puzzles coming together. So the living within a, 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 a personalized experience of passion 
is like being in sync with with who their essence is and that that's where they will feel. That's where they will feel and feel and create. And would this be a better place if we all did that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, that's a beautiful perspective. Um, when you when you talk about every stroke and every piece of dust, it reminds me that, you know, in, in every single atom there is so much life in every single molecule. There's there's the the DNA, the the code, the description. It's a complex little microcosmic world that every single uh, cellular aspect of anything, whether it's a single cell or a multi-celled creature, is alive with all this information that's embedded in it. Yes, yes. That is... That is so true and so beautiful the way you say it. It's it's so unique and complicated at the same time, and it's hard to get our minds wrapped around that. Wow. Okay. So, wow. So I'm I'm glad that wow. I'm glad I'm trying to understand it, and you've been making it so much easier to do that. And how would you feel about walking into a discussion about near death experiences or heaven? or um, life after death. I have no idea where you are on any of that. Um, but when earlier we were talking about stress and anxiety, I know people are so afraid to die and uh, so afraid to uh, pass on and they miss the people that die. And it's a big uh, either fear or draw or denial in people's existence. I have no idea if you have any take on that or any experiences that provide insight. What do you think? (laughs) That is one of the most complicated and the most hard questions any human being can answer. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Wow. But I I have my my takes. I have my my point of views. I feel, yes, yes, when I was younger, I was... Was brought. I was brought to these beautiful places, which I decided to call them heaven and paradise, and and um, you know the most beautiful place on earth, and and the universes. And I felt that there is a heaven. There is heaven, but heaven could also be on earth as well if we create it to be. I think that heaven is all around us in reality and not reality there are so millions upon millions of parallel universes where millions of us are are in sync with with other selves across the universe i think if one is is gone the other one is still there somewhere heaven is is to me a, a figure of word that we are never gone. We are always and always will be connected somehow in somewhere in the way of uh, of, of a part of, uh, in the corner of the universe. And we're never gone no matter what, in, in my opinion. I think we will return to our, our natural um, beings. We will become someone else. Our other selves will 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 grow, and I think it, the universe is so complicated, so diverse that I I don't even understand, and I think no one will fully understand. But there is a heaven everywhere. It's the way we create it, the way we perceive it, and the way we believe in it that makes it even more realer. Create, perceive, and believe. What a fascinating pairing that is what create perceive and believe so that we're simultaneously discovering what is and then we're also creating what is and we're also uh, what when you say belief it's like we're we're uh we're, we're if we know it's there and we search for it we'll find it because you can't search for something you don't believe in that's a very interesting pairing of three that you've put together <laughs> Actually, there's uh, someone who um, when I was speaking with, they they told me this really unique sentence. They said, 
that you cannot discover new oceans and lands unless you have the courage and the bravery to lose sight of the shore. Wow. And that it just it stuck with me for years and years, and I felt that we have to take the first step as as a whole, as a humanity, to to go on to the greater greater um, future. Hmm. Well, are there any experiences that you feel free to share that um, solidify your perspective? I mean, I so appreciate you saying this is my perspective. I'm not trying to step on any toes. Not trying to develop a dogmatism or a following or a, a doctrinaire on this. I, I mean, so that's the way I translate you saying I'm not trying to say anything but my own experience. But what are your experiences that have formed these impressions inside of you? These experiences, even I cannot put a word on them. I feel mm-hmm. that these are um, glimpses of truth, cracks in time that everybody at some point experienced. I feel that these visions and the dreams when I was younger opened my mind and directed me into a different path in in my life, into a better person. I feel people realize these, these little glimpses, these little cracks, these little details and that they remember in their visions or dreams, I think they're telling us as as a humanity something. I think they're telling us uh, information. And as a child, when I was so eager to learn, so eager to know things, I grabbed that information and, and, and decided to build on it. And that's where the art and the poetry decided to come naturally. And that's where I decided to express those informations that I received through the arts. And that's who I am today. And is the, I'm a, in a way a journalist, journalist, artistic journalist who learns Ooh. and who sees and who experiences things and and, and and paints them so others could could learn or share or or just appreciate. Wow, that is beautiful. Arcana, we're gonna go away. We don't have to pay attention to any of the sixty seconds or ninety second thing, so thank you, goodness. <laughs> if you have some more time I'd love to ask more questions, but it's up to you. Oh, absolutely. I'm um I'm here I'm here for a few more minutes, so so just shoot away the questions. <laughs> <laughs> When you say, uh, what, uh, let's go on the dark side of this for just a second. When you, uh, when you hope that a person will will shift into a different awareness, a different consciousness, a different appreciation of all these dimensions that you that your paintings give voice to and message to as a journalist of the arts, and and you and you see someone come to your artwork and going, oh well, that's nice, and then they walk away. I know how I would feel if they did that to your, to your artwork, but how do you feel when they do that? I mean, I can't imagine anybody not loving your work, but what does it feel like when they don't get the deeper myriads of messages from it? Um, I was lots of times traumatized by many people um, just sharing their honest opinions and as an 11 and and a 13 and you know a 7 year old girl I feel it was just it's hard for me um it was extremely t- challenging to to hear someone share their honest opinions um oh. but you know now now nowadays I feel that I kind of ignore them and and it's kind of concentrate on on the better um good of side of things, but I actually realized that maybe it wasn't just maybe it wasn't my art that uh, that helped didn't help them. I think it's somebody else that needed to be a, a uh, enlightenment to them. I feel that oh, it's okay that it didn't um, 
have an effect on those people. I feel that somebody else could have the chance as well. I, it's not the end of the world. I feel that everybody will be able to help each other at some time, at some point. And it, if it's not that point, that time, it just it's the matter of time that <laughs> it will change. I, I kind of, yes, I, I've grown through a lot of, of, of people saying, you know, oh, I don't like your paintings, your, uh, burn your paintings, that's oh. devil's work, and and they yeah. just, it's, it, the list goes on and on and on. But yeah. to hear those uh, opinions, I feel they might have left out on the reality. I feel they don't understand, and it's okay not to understand. I feel maybe they're just confused and maybe they just didn't find the right answer yet and they're searching for the the answer and they, there comes the harsh words and I just kind of ignore them and it'll just take time. Time will tell and time will heal. Oh, you're patient. <laughs> patient I've, so I've gracious le- of you. I've learned a lot, but I'm still learning, but it all comes down with it's with patience, I suppose. I would wonder to what degree you ever have portrayed in any of your artwork the the darkness of humanity that's that's embedded in jealousy and insecurity and greed and um, uh, like a murderous competition, or a, a condescending, cruel judgmentalness. And then been able to take that yuck energy and then show how it's transformed through shedding those snake skins and opening your eyes to the, the multifaceted way the universe wants to talk to us. Is there any artwork that's actually done that in your mind? It it always starts out with maybe an idea of that, but somehow it ends up a beautiful idea for some reason. <laughs> I feel like it always starts out like like a, a little bit of a really, you know, stressed ball and that negative idea, but somehow along the line, time over time, I start painting some positive information and it kind of makes sense. But there's actually a painting. It's it's called um, First Steps of Eternity. It's where this, a, there's a, a earthly self and a heavenly self. And mm-hmm. when I was searching for a model, this is when I was f- about five years ago, when I was searching for a model, I I came across this young lady, which she was, she had beautiful features, beautiful body, and she was the right person that I wanted to pick. As I didn't know nothing about her. I'd only known her name. And after she modeled for me, I just decided to put her in this pose where she's covering her head. And her heavenly self is pouring this liquid hope on her head as if it's like a parallel universe. Wow. And as as I was painting the earthly self, and you could see the trauma, the very... Just this loss of hope in her expression, in her figure, that she was crying. In the painting, you would see that. And as I asked the lady, the model, to ask her opinion, she started crying because I've known her to be such a happy person, but she'd never cried. And she said that she went in the most traumatizing time in her life where she had an extremely extremely traumatizing divorce and she went through a lot of pain and and suffering and as she saw herself in the painting she felt that I somehow uh, predicted her future and actually three months later she she found the most amazing person in her life and she's still with him today and she's she says heaven is on earth and as in the painting, she has a heavenly self pouring this hope on her very um, tearful self. And those little little nuances, those little glimpses of, of, um, of that suffering are in my paintings. 
But at the same time, I know there's a contrast. I know there's an opposite. That maybe I can put those two opposites together and make them work. Because without hate, there's no love. Without darkness, there's no light. I think they both have they both work each other and they have to balance each other out and that's that's our um that's some of the in my paintings as well wow that is a beautiful description so we can live in the transcendent where everything is like harmonious and heavenly but there's also these dimensions i'm wondering the way i where the yin and the yang, the dark and the black, the, the dark, the black, and the light and the the light, uh, uh, the lightness of living coexist as a dance. They have to dance together. They have to contrast each other. Yes, absolutely. It's, you said yeah. it so beautifully. <laughs> oh, you're inspiring. You're very, very inspiring. In any last message you've one you would love people to hear that uh, so when they walk to your paintings with their soul with their heart with their eyes with their life experiences with their their points of views philosophies and spiritual perspectives what what would you like to message to them right now in this moment as they walk towards your painting that is a great great question oh i that is so hard to answer in one sentence or, or or two. I just feel that each time when they look at the paintings, I want them to walk away with with yes, with a with a hopeful response to it. But at the same time, I want them to practic to use it into practical terms to actually. Mm-hmm take it away and use it especially in the family and in your everyday life, your family and your work. Sometimes I just absolutely enjoy hearing those comments where they hang the paintings in, in their living room and they feel that they're more connected with their families because they have many th- more things in common and they talk more and they are around each other more. I feel that the most important thing I want everybody to consider is more bonding with the family because from that point, from that first step, everything will blossom from there. Your your spirituality, your love, your career, the world's future actually revolves around the family's first step and how it could be a mutual respect. It could be a communications. It could be just just all out there love. But the family, if it's so, if it's damaged, if it's cracked, the first step is to heal them and bandage them, and then life will be more, so much easier and so much uh, successful, and and not just reality. It's it's more spirituality as well and hopefully my paintings could unite people like that by loving each other and the first the family and then the friends and then the world <laughs> wow that is that's a beautiful beautiful gift to give all of us wow that our lives would Walk into a world where we could feel each other and 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 be in the presence with each other with bonding, warmth, um, the the reality of what's really important that we could that we could feel and he- hear that and experience that as we resonate with your paintings. What a wonderful gift to give all of us, Akiana. And I I thank you so much. You've given me the gift of this interview. I'm so blessed. But you've also given oh. the world the gift of your paintings. Oh wow, that's so awesome. Oh. I- Oh, thank you, Carol. For that was so sweet. Thank you. I think we all have a little part in this world, and you have that laughter and that love that you share with all your listeners. And I think that you're you're special, extremely special, Carol. Thank you. Okay, you're awesome. You know, I guess you need to get on with your beautiful beach uh, Hawaii day. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I, this has been.
been such a gift. I hope we get a chance to do this yet again. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Carol, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. You as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>